Uh, Turkey. Let's talk about Turkey. Uh, uh, I have a lot of friends who have made the trip to go out there. When you and I initially connected, I alluded to that, and then you mentioned something about like, yeah, probably not a good idea. Um, what are what are the what are the cons? Why why should people yeah, avoid so, doing that? I mean, that's it's a it's a very big trend, right? Medical tourism has been around for a long time. I mean, there are people here in South Florida that will travel to Costa Rica or Mexico for liposuction, for breast augmentation. Stem cells. The problem is, is that when you go out of the country, especially to a third world country, uh, where the regulations are different, sterilization is different, biohazardous waste is treated differently. You know, you may not be getting the same level of care that you think that you or that you would expect to get here in the United States. Hmm. And I'm not saying that every single clinic in the United States is you know, sure, super sure, clean sure. and all that, obviously. But I think that you you're tipping the the scales against yourself yeah. if you're traveling to a third world country, um, especially in a location where there's really not much regulation whatsoever when it comes to medical practice. Hmm. So anybody can open up a clinic in Turkey as long as they just pay the government a registration fee. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> it's like you know, a random and, and person. There's, and there's, yeah, and, the, and there's, there's certainly plenty of news reports of, of people, you know, people finding out that their, their surgeon was a real estate agent. I mean, it's not, that's not, I didn't make that up. I mean, yeah, literally just a couple crazy. of weeks ago, uh, someone came back from a destination location, had a beard hair transplant, it didn't heal well, it didn't grow in well, and he killed himself because he found out Obviously, the, the, what had happened during the procedure was not on point. Mm -hmm. It was not uh, you know, up to medical standards. And the person that he trusted to do the procedure was not even a physician. Wow. So look, there, there are great surgeons all over the world. And I know there are great surgeons in Turkey. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're responding to a late night infomercial, okay, <laughs> with a 1-800 you know, number or something like yeah. that, I would caution you there, okay? <laughs> you know, that's probably not the kind yeah. of research that you want to be doing. You know, you got to look at credentials and things like that. And the same is true whether you're getting a text message from some unknown Instagram account or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, on social media telling you that, oh, you can just fix the hair this way. Right. The other thing that's going to be lacking, aside from just medical expertise, surgical skill and cleanliness and things like that, is artistry. There's no place in the world that has caught up to the United States when it comes to the artistry of these procedures, mm, cosmetically. Okay. And so that applies to teeth. You know, people fly to, for turkey teeth all the time. Now they yeah. only killed six people last year in turkey teeth. Oh um, but you know, artistry is important, whether you're having liposuction, breast augmentation, a facelift, mm. yeah. a hair transplant. So if you want to come out of a hair transplant with a thick wall of hair straight across your eyebrows, yeah. um, you know, go great, have a good time. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the turkey, turkey technique that we warn people about. Mm, yeah. And some people are okay with it. Look, people loved the plugs of the 1960s and 1970s. Mm. Why? Because they were bald and then they had a little bit of hair to comb. Right, right. I mean, they had nothing and then they had something. Right. So we understand. A little bit of hair is good. Yeah. But today, the technology allows us to provide a painless procedure. Mm with 100% undetectable, natural-looking results. Wow. So, and that has to do with technology, but also that artistry. Yeah, 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 from somebody who's actually qualified to do this and has been doing it for a couple decades. Right, yeah. so you know, 27 years of experience and over 33,000 patients treated and mm. 14,000 surgeries. I mean, this is, you know, a lot of time on tissues. Yeah, 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 right. Um, okay, so hair transplant, I think, is something that's probably pretty widely known as like the ultimate solution to the problem. But when you and I had our original conversation, the thing that surprised me was that you were saying that even if you get a hair transplant, that doesn't necessarily um, take care of the hair that would not be transplanted. So that means that if you're not doing something to maintain the hair that you do have that's strong or healthy, or even if it's getting a little bit thin and wispy, um, if you don't do something to maintain that, then you might have to get another transplant to patch up the spots that didn't get taken care of in the first transplant or something like that, right? So there's a couple of other treatments which uh, which we're gonna go do after this. Um, uh, so can you can you talk through like a couple of those other solutions on sure. maintenance and even for what you do for folks after they have a hair transplant? Yeah, I mean, you bring up an amazing, excellent, and on point uh, concept that your transplanted hair is permanent, but your other hair is not. Yeah. So the reason why transplanted hair is permanent is immune to your body's hormones. It comes from the back of the scalp. Those hairs never go away. So you see somebody with mm. total baldness, they still have hair, sides and back. Yeah. Those are the follicles that we use for the transplant. Everything else, over time, 
chronically will progress in terms of miniaturization and loss, depending on your genetics. Hmm. The speed at which that occurs and the endpoint is on into the future, right? So, it, and genetically determined. So you have to protect the non-transplanted hair. In hmm. fact, if you're a younger patient, let's just say under the age of 30, the critical step is not go out, run, get the hair transplant, but get on a treatment regimen to hmm. stop the progression of the loss before, and it could be a few months or a year, but get on some medical therapy. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Years ago, it was mainly just two pharmaceuticals, minoxidil and finasteride, and that was the end of the story. Today, we take a full inventory. Okay. What are your, what's your health status? What's your nutritional status? What's your sleep-wake cycle? Do you have whole body inflammation? Are there things that are dysregulating your scalp? Is your scalp healthy? Is it inflamed? Is it itchy? Hmm. Is it burning? Is there something going on? You have sores or, or pimples or folliculitis up there. Clean up the scalp first, make sure that's healthy. And then there are therapies. Yeah, not just medications today, but nutritionals, nutraceuticals, right? And there's also red light therapy, low level laser, which can be a powerful hair regrowth tool. Hmm. And then in the office, we've got regenerative treatments like platelet rich plasma, you're gonna experience that. Hmm. Um, these are therapies that utilize your own body's healing mechanisms to stimulate hair regrowth. Okay, so it's PRP, what, can you define what that is and how it actually works? Sure. So PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. Most people are familiar with the vampire treatment, like when it comes to skin rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. Most people have heard of orthopedic conditions like, you know, a bum knee and, you know, there's some injection that's done in the knee and miraculously six to 12 weeks later, you don't need surgery. Mm -hmm. It's healed and it feels good. Usually that's platelets or bone marrow or something like that. Okay. So these are regenerative medicine techniques and we can use those powerful platelets and, and the growth factors that are contained in the platelets, those chemical biological messages to rejuvenate hair follicles. Hmm. So when we do a PRP treatment, we're gonna obviously assess the area that we're gonna treat. We don't expect an area that's totally dead and gone to come back with PRP. That's not what PRP is. PRP is not a hair transplant. Think of it more like fertilizer in the garden. Hmm. Right? Okay. It's gonna rejuvenate the weaker quality hairs. So your procedure, takes less than an hour, we take a small blood sample, we map out the area, we're gonna do some back tracking photos and measurements, and then we're gonna deploy the, P we're gonna prepare the PRP in a very special way to get to the correct dose or concentration of platelets. Okay. There's a few other things that we do to that uh, mixture to make it work, and then we'll deploy that into the scalp in a painless way. And this is something that you need to have done on a sort of regular basis, correct? Yeah, so what we've seen over time, the old fashioned way to do PRP is kind of a series of treatments with a low, low concentration of platelets. That's kind of falling out of favor. What we've determined is that a powerful, high concentration platelet treatment is gonna work for about 10 to 14 months, one treatment. Okay, got so it. So it becomes kind of an annual bit of business okay. that you'll keep up on. Okay. Some patients are lucky, they get more than a year's worth of growth. Yeah. Um, and that could be just your response to the PRP. It could be from some of the things that we add to PRP, like exosome therapy or other things like polydioxidone threads that go in the skin to prolong the effect. Okay. Um, and other patients are not as lucky and they need treatments more quickly. Okay. You know, Got six it. months or something, nine months. But everything is done through measurements. So your response to treatment is going to be measured and monitored. Great. Always get a baseline execute a treatment, whatever it might be, something at home, something in the office, and then we'll look at it over time and see what effect it has. Awesome, well, we're gonna go do that right now. Um, and I think we're gonna get some footage of it as well for everybody watching, everybody tuning in, so you can actually see some of the stuff that's gonna go on. Um, before we uh, move on to that segment, where can people go to learn a little bit more about you, your clinic, and how they can potentially get some treatment here. Yeah, so I mean, if you're out there and you're thinking that you might be at risk for some hair loss, like you've looked at your family, mom's side or dad's side, and there's some male pattern, female pattern there, you definitely want to get an evaluation sooner than later. We always say time equals follicles. Hmm. You can lose 50% of your hair without it being noticeable to the naked eye. So get on That's top of crazy. it quickly. <laughs> yeah. So at baumanmedical.com, B-A-U-M-A-N, medical, you can see literally thousands and thousands of pages of information on how we diagnose, evaluate, and treat the hair loss process from the least invasive to more invasive, like hair transplantation. Great. You can ask a question. You go to baumanmedical.com slash ask. You can type in any question. You know, what's the best treatment for me or whatever, and, and I'll get an answer out to you. Awesome. You can also initiate a consultation. Schedule something for in the office here in South Florida in Boca Raton, where the, the mothership is, you yep. know. Yep just uh, you know, not too far from the beach and here, right here in sunny Florida. Yeah. Or we can start the journey virtually through a Zoom call. 
uh, submit some photos, some background information, yeah. and we can really get a good idea of what's exactly going on. Yeah, you guys made it really, really easy for sure. Yeah, because I, yeah, that we, we did all that before I came out here just to you know see like, hey, is there something to do here? Um, and unfortunately for me, there is something to do. So, um, so that's what we're going to do right now, uh, Dr. Moon. I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing a lot of great information. I had a lot of fun to chat with you. Yeah, um, thanks so much, everybody tuning in. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to go do some treatment right now. So, uh, we'll show some of that footage uh, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Remember to leave every relationship better than you found it. Peace.